So, with the final pick of Minnesota's draft, they selected Jalen Twyman out of Pittsburgh. He is a three-tech. Uh, he opted out of 2020. In 2019, however, he had 10.5 sacks and 12 tackles for loss. He was actually the first guy from Pitt to have a double sack season, well, double digit sack season, since Aaron Donald, which is not a bad company to be in. Now, he actually didn't test all that well, but he has a lot of plus traits here. Now, I do think he needs to improve a little bit on the technical side. Because currently, from what I saw, at least from going back to the 2019 stuff, he is strictly a pass rushing three tech. Almost, ex- he's exclusively that. So, but despite being six foot one, I think he kind of plays with a little bit of poor leverage. He doesn't really use proper ba- uh, proper bases, and that can allow him to kind of get pushed around a bit more. He it's not always balanced, and that's part of playing with poor leverage then I also think he needs to utilize his hands a little bit more just because it kind of feels like he's a man without a plan at times, and that's never fun. Now, however, I do think he has a really good first step. He has a lot of natural strength, and he has long arms for his size. So you can teach all of the other stuff. You cannot teach those things. And those physical things, is they are what they are. So now Rick Spielman actually went ahead and talked to Jalen Twyman apparently throughout this draft process and was talking about his weight. Apparently, um, he feels like he he kind of went up. He was at a lighter weight in 2019 than he was at the pro day. He had a lackluster pro day. So Minnesota sounds like they want him back down into like the mid 280s to 290s maybe kind of range where he has more burst and quickness so he doesn't have what I think was a 53940 (laughs) at his pro day. So I think that's the plan. He also said that um, they viewed him as one of the better pass rushing, well interior pass rushing players in all of college football prior to him opting out. So... I think their plan is kind of to get a nickel pass rusher out of this, who they actually have been kind of looking for basically since Sheldon Richardson left. And I'm thinking they don't view this as a typical sixth round draft pick from the way he talked about him. So I'm actually kind of liking this because this is I think this is a low risk, high reward player here. And if you want to compare this room to what Minnesota had last year in terms of this interior defensive line group. Currently, we have Michael Pierce, Dalvin Tomlinson, Armand Watts, James Lynch, and Jalen Twyman. Last year, we had Shamar Steffen, Jaleel Johnson, Armand Watts, uh, James Lynch, and that was uh, basically it for the most part. And every once in a while, you might see a guy like Jalen Holmes or Hercules Mata'afa kind of sneak in there. But that was the group. Comparatively, this is night and day. This is so much better. It's not even close. So that is what that is. But I actually I like this Twyman thing if we can get him back down to that bursty kind of weight. Because that means they don't need to spend money in post-draft free agency on a uh, basically a nickel three tech that they would like to put in there in more passing situations, but might play anywhere basically from you know fifteen to twenty five snaps, depending on who you're playing. And the guys you would probably be looking at are basically Geno Atkins, maybe Sheldon Richardson, but I think you'd probably be more so looking at Geno Atkins just because I think Sheldon would be in a different price range, but. If Jalen Twyman can do it, all of a sudden, if you want to partake in, you know, post-draft free agency for some of those veterans that are still kind of lingering out there, it does not have to be Geno Atkins. It does not have to be Sheldon Richardson. It can, you can look at the other end spot. There are some of them out there. You still have Melvin Ingram and Justin Houston out there. I know that. 
Uh, there are some corners still, I believe. I think Casey Hayward's still out there as well. Like, you have some players currently out there in the free agent veteran market. So, it shouldn't be overlooked. And this is just one more thing they don't have to think about if they can get Jalen Twyman back on the right track. Now, do you want to risk everything on a sixth round pick? No. But that's why you have James Lynch. You drafted him last year in the fourth round, who is supposed to be a pass rushing three tech. So if anything, I think these two are going to be fighting for this spot. And I'm kind of interested to see who wins it just because I think Twyman is more naturally gifted. But I think James Lynch will probably be further ahead in the technical department. And plus Twyman has to start behind the eight ball a little bit considering he needs to slim down. So I think that's going to be an interesting battle. I'm not sure if you can get away with Twyman on the practice squad. That's another part of this that could be very intriguing. Um, I would like to know your guys' comments down below. Uh, like and subscribing, super helpful. And until next time, I bid you all adieu.